This video is sponsored by our friends at Hoem. More about their fantastic gimbal in just a minute. I suppose at this point there's a million ways to use your iPhone. Over the years, the iPhone's capabilities have really grown, and with that has come complexity. You know it as well as I do. And finding the balance between ease of use and taking advantage of some of the iPhone's best features is the challenge. In other words, trying to keep things simple. That's what this video is all about. Hi, my name is Rich. I make easy to follow videos on how to use your iPad and iPhone, you know, without going nuts. Though in this video I'm using iOS 18, iOS 26 is on the horizon and it brings a whole new set of features. I continually think about the easiest way to use an iPhone while still keeping in touch with new features and how I might share the process I use with you. And listen, I know everyone's different, so please set your iPhone up the way that makes sense for you. But for me, it really boils down to five basic things. Cleaning up the home screen so it's not a mess choosing a wallpaper that's aesthetically pleasing, adding back important apps and choosing dark mode, adding a couple of useful widgets, and then customizing Control Center to fill in the blanks. I've road tested these methods for years and it really does work for me. My guess is it will work for you too. Let me show you how I do each of these. Okay, first up is just cleaning the home screen up. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a big fan of this. I just, whenever I see a whole bunch of apps like this, I can never find what I'm looking for. Maybe it's just me, but I just don't like this mess. So I remove each one of these apps. And I don't remove them from the iPhone, I just simply put them in the app library. And to do that, you can just simply tap on one, and then tap Remove App, and then Remove from Home Screen. I don't want to delete the app, I just want to remove it from the home screen. And it's gone, just like that. And to do that even quicker, you can tap and hold and sort of grab an app and jiggle it and then tap the other apps and they'll go all under your finger just like this. You can't do it with widgets, so I won't do it with the widget. And then you can take your finger and slide over till you come to the app library. And now you got all these under your finger. And all you have to do is just put them in a single square. It doesn't matter which square, just make sure it's in one of the squares and let go. And like that, you've cleaned up your home screen. And the only thing left is the widget, and you have to delete those separately. So I'm going to tap on that, and I'm going to remove. And now I have a clean home screen, and it's pretty simple to do that, and it only took me just a few seconds to do it. You might have multiple pages of apps, but you can do that for each individual page. You know, next up is just choosing a aesthetically pleasing wallpaper. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm always having some kind of colorful background or a dark background or just something, and I change my wallpapers on a regular basis just because it keeps my phone interesting to me. To change the wallpaper, all you have to do is swipe down like this from the top, and then press and hold, and now we're going to add, I have a whole bunch of wallpapers already here on this phone, but we're going to add a new one, so I'm going to go all the way to the right and tap the plus. And now there's a whole bunch of different wallpapers that are in here. So you have some that are for weather, iOS 18, and you can go in and choose from these uh, choices that you have. You can choose photos that are on your in your in from your photos library. There's my grandson. You can choose weather, and you have a whole bunch of built-in choices that come from Apple. But what if you don't like any of those choices? Well, another option is Photos. So I'm going to tap on that, and I'm going to choose Photos over here. And then it just pulls up Featured. Well, I don't want to see what they want to feature. I'm going to look at all of my photos. And you can see I've got a variety of different wallpapers in here. And all of those wallpapers just came off the internet. I just went to Google, typed in minimalist wallpaper, and up pops these wallpapers, and then I just downloaded them to my iPhone, and that's how I got them on here. So I'm going to choose this wallpaper right here. I'm going to tap on it, and I have kind of a nice looking wallpaper. Now you can change it by squeezing and pinching in. You can do a bunch of different things with it. I think I want it to be just kind of like that, just about like 
what the photo was. I do like to sort of change the colors to be a little brighter because I've got old man eyes and I want to be able to see the phone a little better. And then I'm going to tap Add. And if you'll notice right here, you see the wallpaper here, but you notice over here it's kind of blurry. So I'm going to, I don't like the blur feature, so I'm going to tap Customize Home Screen right there. And I'm going to take the blur off like that. And then I'm going to tap Done up here. And then I'm going to tap on it again, and I'm going to swipe away. And now I have an aesthetically pleasing wallpaper for me, and that's how you do it. When Hoem reached out to me about the Hoem iSteady M7 gimbal, I was all on board. I don't know about you, but when I look back at videos I've taken over the years of various family events and vacations, I'm never in them. That's because I'm the one filming with my iPhone. The Hoem iSteady M7 gimbal solves all of that. I can just pop my phone in the gimbal, balance it, and let it follow me around. And I plan on doing that as the holiday season is just around the corner. This gimbal has an advanced AI tracker that's incredibly easy to set up. The tracker magnetically snaps to the top of the gimbal, and by simply turning it around, it'll work with either the front-facing camera or the rear-facing camera. With a simple OK hand gesture, the tracker is activated and ready to go. Turning off the tracker is as simple as using the universal hand signal for stop. I can't stress how easy this is to use. But what sets the M7 apart from other gimbals is the detachable touchscreen remote. You can easily get to all the settings you need to operate the gimbal remotely, including a real-time preview for framing up a shot or just getting a better look at what you're filming. You can stop and start recording with the tap of a button, as well as move the camera with a joystick. This feature alone is unlike any other gimbal on the market at this price point. And to spice things up, this gimbal shoots in infinite pan rotation. You can literally get smooth cinematic shots that are nearly impossible to get any other way. This gimbal has so many unique features, including the clever ability to charge the phone using the gimbal's battery with just the included cable, you know, just in case you need to juice your iPhone back up. To take the gimbal to the next level, Hoem offers a number of professional accessories, including the Hoem Mic Zero One. You can clip the mic to your shirt or use the magnet to attach it for a smoother look. It transmits the signal for professional sounding audio, especially when you're at a distance from your iPhone. If you're a content creator like I am, I can't stress how important the audio is to a great video and the Hoem Mic Zero One solves that problem. Pair all of this with the Hoem Sling hand grip and the portable RGB photography light, and you have a complete setup. Whether you just like to get good family videos, or especially if you're a solo content creator, the Hoem iSteady M7 gimbal is the solution you're looking for. Be sure to check out the links in the description below to learn more about this fantastic gimbal and all the accessories. And a special thanks to our friends at Hoem for their support of this channel. Now back to the video. Okay, now that I have cleaned up my home screen and put a new wallpaper on there, I do like to bring back some apps that I use, things that are important to me. Now, what's important to me may not be important to you, so make sure you put your important apps on the home screen. But here's how I do it. First of all, I view the phone as a communication device, so I like to have my communication apps down here. I don't like to have reminders in there, so I'm going to tap on this, and I'm going to tap and get rid. I'm going to remove that from the home screen. And now I have my iPhone, I have Messages, and I have FaceTime in there. But I do like to have Mail in there. That's a communication app for me as well, so I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to find the mail app. I think it's in productivity. I'm going to tap and hold and I'm going to tap add to home screen and now I've got the mail app up there. I'm going to tap and hold again till it's jiggling and then I'm just going to bring that down to the dock. So now in the dock I've got phone, messages, FaceTime, and mail. My communication apps are right there and that's the way I like to set it up. Now, I also like to keep a few apps that I use regularly on the home screen. And I like to start with notes. I'm going to add that to the home screen. I do like to have reminders. I'm going to add that to the home screen. 
I do like to have my calendar. I'm going to add that to the home screen. And I like to have photos. I'm going to add that to the home screen. And now I've got these up here, but I don't like them being up at the top because I'm usually holding my phone and I like them to be in a better location. So now I'm going to tap and hold and I'm just going to bring these down. You can now put these icons where you want with iOS 18. I'm going to do that. So now I've got a clean screen and I use notes, reminders, calendar, and photos sort of regularly. Of course there's other apps, they're all in here, and I can always go back and get to any one of them from the app library, but honestly these are the main apps that I use and I keep them handy. And now I'm not searching through a big bunch of garbage or multiple screens to find something. I've got them right at my fingertips. I also like to add a couple of useful widgets. So I'm going to tap on this. I'm going to go to Edit. And I'm going to tap on Add Widget. And I like to have the clock. So I'm going to go over here and choose Clock. I like that clock. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Add Widget again, and I like to have a calendar, and I like to have the, the date. I'm going to add that one up there. And now I'm, I have the date and time right there, so I know that I have the date, the time, and my widgets. Now sometimes I'll take those and I'll just put them on top of each other and create a widget stack, and then and then I can just sort of scroll through them if I want to know the date and the time, like that. If you do that, I would urge you to tap on the widget, tap on Edit Stack, and then turn off Smart Rotate and Widget Suggestions so that your phone doesn't just add a bunch of stuff to it. So now you've got a pretty clean looking phone. Now for me, this is light mode. This is the mode that's been around on the iPhone for years and years. I like dark mode better, so I'm going to tap and hold on this, and I'm going to tap customize, and I'm going to choose dark, and if you'll notice the whole background got kind of dark. I don't like that. There's a little icon right here that will lighten the background back up, the wallpaper. I'm going to tap on that, so we have now dark icons against the regular background. And if you know what your apps are, you can just tap on large, make them large, and it takes away the text. And you don't have to have the text. I like them large just because it's easier for me to tap on, but that would be up to you. But now I've got a home screen where I have my communication apps, the apps I use most of the time, and then a widget up here that's got date and time. And I think that's a pretty good looking home screen. You know, I do use other apps, but I like to keep those in Control Center, and they're still just a swipe away. So I'm going to swipe down from Control Center. I've already removed a whole bunch of stuff out of Control Center. You may have a bunch of different things there. If you tap and hold on it, you notice a little minus comes up, so you can remove whatever you have in there if you don't want to see it. I want dark mode settings the screen brightness and the audio loudness. I want those in Control Center, but I also want a couple of other things. I'm going to tap on Add Control, and I'm wanting the Open App thing, so I'm going to search for that. And here we have Open App right there, and I'm going to tap on that, and it's going to ask me what app do I want to open. Well, for me, I want to open the Weather App. And if you'll notice, it's just got the weather icon, but I can't ever remember that, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to drag it down here so there's kind of a gap between there. Maybe, maybe I'll put it right there. And then I'm going to do that for a couple of more apps. I like the News app, so I'm going to go back in here and I'll tap on Add App. I'm going to go to News. And again, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to turn it like that. I'm going to tap on Add Control again. App. I like podcasts to be in here. Of course, you can put in here anything that you want. 
I mean, any apps that make sense to you, but these are for me, things that I do. And then I'm going to add one last one, and I'll tap on Add App one last time, and I'm going to put music in here because I enjoy listening to Apple Music on a regular basis. And I'm going to drag this over here, and I'm going to make it a big one like that. So now, in Control Center, I can get to weather, news, podcast, and music. And I don't have to have those all over here on my home screen. I can just swipe down, tap on weather, and it takes me to the weather. Just like that. Swipe down, take me to news, just like that. I'm in the news app. So that is just a simple way to customize your iPhone to make it easier to use. So that's it. That's how I customize my iPhone to work for me. Let me know in the comments below how you customize your iPhone. I'd love to know. Okay, as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.